and um we are going to have some fun tonight those other two guys what are their names i can't remember the names dr budgie and dr lark anyway they're not here i'm standing in i'm standing in for the raw pet medics this evening so we're going to have some fun i've got some uh, some questions that karen has organized karen thank you very much really really appreciate that and um we are going to do some work here um we've got various things and um great to see everybody here rach mack was the first one in great well done rach i think that's probably three on the trot brilliant carol is here michelle all the way from from uh chicago it's amazing and the rain and joyce marvelous absolutely great let me just make sure i've got these things organized here we go here we go otherwise pete is going to kill me okay what we normally do is we have a little rundown and then about a minute before we start uh we say make sure your phone is on make sure your zoom is on to to to, to record it and uh and what have you so uh just as the three two one went before i thought oh, no, i haven't got me haven't got my headphones in so i'm just trying to get those to work here they don't seem like they're very happy pete will kill me let me just go bear with me talk amongst yourselves and we'll go like that let's see if that works no doesn't work right okay i'm going to do it bareback that's the way pete is going to kill me but there you go that's the way it is now welcome to raw pet medics it feels it feels a little bit like you remember when you're a teenager and your parents went out and they said make sure you look after the house and as soon as the door was shut you went yes off we go we're gonna have some fun that's how it feels this evening i want to say a big warm welcome to brothers and sisters in the united states who've come via dr judy's site you're really welcome welcome to everybody uh from from those of you who are in south africa those of you in europe those of you coming to us from australia absolutely great to have you here um it's going to be a great evening um and so we are all here we're all ready i've pinched brendan's chrome to to use all the uh all the gizmos all the uh, the logos and things um i've got to say um a big welcome to our patreon supporters couldn't do it without you a small contribution every week from all of you guys goes a long way we've, we've got to pay pete our sound guy and we've got somebody who's now doing our social media so that we can spread the good word about raw food and great 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 nutrition so those guys are helping us with that and um you are helping us to get them to do some really really nice work patreon if you want to join it's patreon.com slash raw pet medics okay so you can you can join us there if you like podcasts and i'm interested actually guys do you use the podcasts are we wise to continue with our podcasts um please let me know if you love the uh, podcasts let me know if you never listen to them also let me know um yes as you see i'm just up for a party because i think we, we do, we've got this we've got room to breathe we you know we're going to have some fun so i'm going to get a little more intimate by going like that and saying hello there and um i've talked about patreon so i'm going to hide that and i've you know who we are so i'm going to get rid of that so it's just you and me talking so what are we going to talk about tonight you're welcome to put some questions in there be really great to to talk to you not at you um so uh i've got a book <laughs> you knew i was going to say that I actually i put it in the write-up i'm going to talk about a book that i've just started reading so i've only just started reading it but it's it's very exciting and i want to uh, say a big thank you to 
uh, Charlie Lambert, who who, uh, who who stood in and and um, uh, let me know about this book on Monday. I just finished. I've just done three Thomas Hardy's on the trot because I'm just obsessed with it. I, I, I read uh the woodlanders and then i read mayor of casterbridge and then i read jude the obscure and jude the obscure if you haven't read it is a really really depressing read and so um uh when i finished it on monday morning uh, i i was just thinking oh my goodness i really really need uh some picking up so charlie stepped in and he he uh, suggested this book um with which is going to kill me with this as well because I have to pick up my phone, which is my rescue uh, audio. And here we go. Whoops. Bump. Here we go. This is ugh. clip. Clip. Okay. Let's. Okay. So this is the this is the book. Can you see that? It's called Humankind, and it's by. Rutger Bregman, who's uh, a Dutch uh, academic, who writes really beautifully. He he his his turn of phrase, and he's discussing scientific um, theories and the history of, of 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 philosophy and what have you, in such a way that it makes it totally 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 accessible. It's a great read. I listen to audiobooks everywhere <laughs> literally everywhere and what i do when i'm when i'm when i'm um walking the dogs is i have a little pouch that goes across here and i put my phone into that so that i can hear the audiobook and at the same time i can hear the dogs so that um they they know where i am uh, no they know where i am because they can hear the audiobook everywhere so i hardly have to talk to my dogs for the entire walk which is really really great you know because i don't have to bother them um and i can hear it and i can hear the birds singing and i can i can you know interact with nature as 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 it should be so um it, it, it's it's a book which dispels <clears throat> with a lot of really 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 um good examples throughout history you know quoting the bible quoting um hobbes the, the the philosopher and hume and and all these other these these great great minds because what his major uh, uh, idea is is that um we're all taught that humans are fundamentally bad yeah there's original sin in the bible and you read the news and there's terrible things happening and and what have you and so we are <clears throat> we are definitely in in western society we are led to believe that we are untrustworthy and and we are slightly dodgy and we are you know um not the shining examples of of light beings that we might want to be but what he's actually saying is that when you look at the modern science actually the majority of people the majority of time are really good and are trustworthy and are um they do want to help you know and they do want to 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 work as community and what have you and that's all very interesting i think that's great the history of of, of, of philosophy and the history of of, of uh the, the the psychology of of, of man is is very interesting however there is there is um they're, they're talking quite a lot about animal behavior yeah because evolution says we came from chimps and so he's looking at jane goodall goodall and how chimps behave but one of the things that struck me he was talking about the domestication of dogs and he was talking about in the 70s they started they 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 had silver fox farms in 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 siberia which is not great but they had them you know for pelts and what have you and so so what they did is they they saved many of these silver foxes from slaughter for pelts and 
they selected when they first started they and silver foxes are really aggressive okay and so they were using those as the primeval example of um a species that had been completely 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 undomesticated and so the researchers first of all went in there and this is really really hush hush because talking about evolution in soviet russia was a big no-no don't ask me why but it was a big no-no and this is kind of what they were looking they were looking at the evolution of domestication so they 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 went in and all of these silver foxes were you know jumping up at the cages and they had to wear fantastically thick gloves to get anywhere near the the, the silver foxes and with that first generation they selected those silver foxes who hesitated slightly before they started to have a go at the at the, at the people at the scientists who were uh, observing them that's where they started and incredibly within five generations and the only trait that they were searching for that they were breeding for was um, um, docility uh, friendliness um, the ability to be less aggressive okay that's it they weren't looking for size or shape or any, anything else and what they found was that within five generations they had produced a silver fox which actually wagged its tail which is absolutely unknown within silver foxes wagging the tail obviously is a sign that yeah um i'm uh, I, I i want to communicate in a non-aggressive way with you they carried on this work for 25 generations and they produced a domesticated dog and what they found is that by just selecting for friendliness they also select for increased intelligence and that's where it gets really interesting and so what the what the author is saying is that domestication which has happened to to us humans over three million years or so we have selected amongst ourselves for friendliness because friendliness means you get on with your with the, 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 your neighbors you cooperate you cooperate in hunting and what have you and and so by mm, unbeknownst to us we're selecting for for uh, friendliness but actually we increased our intelligence by selecting for friendliness as i say i've only just started the book but this is uh, some of the delights that are even in the first hour of the book so a lot of really uh, uh useful information i think there whatever your whatever your that's my lovely daughter whatever your interest i think there's going to be something for you here this is the book and thanks again to charlie lambert for uh for suggesting it now i'm just going to, going to spend a few minutes talking about how i and ellie my wife feed our dogs she feeds the most of all okay hands up all right i'm usually running around like a headless chicken especially on tuesday nights and she does most of the feeding okay now i'm i'm mr raw food okay i've been telling people to and uh, coaching people to feed raw food for 25 years okay and so what does my wife do she cooks the veggies that she adds to the to the to the meat so we get uh, a kind of a uh, lovely 80 10 10 mix of meat 80 percent uh meat approximately 10 percent bone approximately and 10 percent organ meat organ meat is dramatically important okay that's where you get your vitamin d from that's where you get your zinc from um apart from anything else okay so it's where you get your b vitamins from very 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 important okay so 80 10 10 um how do we select those meats the answer is that it's the first thing that comes out of the freezer now when i talk to people i will say i think and i and i do and in theory i think this is the best way to feed and if it was up to me this is how i would feed but 
she, she does the feeding. So I, when I say to people, I say, ideally, you would feed the same thing every day for about a week or so, five days, seven days, nine days, okay, approximately. And then you'd swap to another because then you'd allow that original protein a few weeks off until you come back to it. And I think that that will reduce the amount, the, 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 uh, the chance of developing sensitivity to that protein. Logical? Yeah, logical. Okay. Um, so that's what I preach to people to do. Okay. Um, but she takes the raw food so she does feed a, a raw meat okay so that's brilliant that's really really good and um but what she will do and i think she's she's her mum's uh indonesian okay she, uh, her dad's from uh east end of london and uh, uh her mum's from it's from um uh java in indonesia and so there's, there's a thing in Indonesia where they love to cook food every single day, you know, twice a day, three times a day. It's always produced fresh food. OK, and I think that's where it comes from. And 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 there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. So what she loves to do is she will get the greens. So she'll get um, Cavolo Nero or she'll get a bit of um, broccoli, really whatever's in the fridge, whatever the whatever the children haven't eaten, she will uh, she will she will go for from the fridge fresh and chop it up really finely and put it in the frying pan at a low temperature, either uh, usually with olive oil and we'll fry it at a very low heat for probably 10 or 15 minutes okay she just does it while she's doing other things making food for the children and things like that and um so what else will she add to that she will add nuts and herbs and seeds to that so she does listen to something that i said that i talk about nhs nuts herbs and seeds and um she'll also put in herbs um spices okay so there'll be turmeric in there and there will be um other spices maybe a tiny bit of ginger or something like that okay and the dogs uh I, we've got mouse who's two years old she's a whippet italian greyhound cross and she's a brindle and we've got uh we've got bluebell who is a four-year-old whippet italian greyhound cross who's her half sister who is a uh a bluey uh sort of color hence the name um and so they've developed a palette whereby they, they 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 are completely happy with probably 20 percent veg in their bowl okay so it's 80 percent 80 10 10 and 20 percent veg and um they will tolerate that really well it's all mixed up um and it works really well they have 99 percent of the time fantastic poos all dogs will get a little bit squitty every now and again and mine are no different the fact that they eat horse poo and chicken poo and goodness knows what on a fairly regular basis and yet they don't they don't get runny tummies on a regular basis which suggests to me that their microbiome is in great shape they've never had an antibiotic so they've got six dog years in between the two of them and yet they haven't had an antibiotic so i'm really proud of that and and they have uh, uh, great poos we use uh, wormcount.com for uh, for for uh, for for testing for worms okay i don't use um, um, uh, uh, any other uh, any other laboratory um uh, what we will also use periodically is we will use vermex i work with these guys okay so you know uh, always be aware of where people um um if people have affiliations just it's it's, it's worth being aware of that but i've been working with these guys vermex for 12 years now I think they're great. It's a family-run business, and I really, really like them. For fleas and ticks, Karen was mentioning that she wanted to um, 
talk about fleas and ticks. And so uh, I wanted to just say, this is what we use for fleas and ticks. Uh, there we go. I don't want to come too close to the camera because otherwise I'll go out of focus again. So it's called flea and tick. <laughs> it's kind of easy to remember. Uh, which way do I rotate it that way? Okay. It's got a nice collie on there. Okay. And it's called flea and tick. That's what we use. It's just a herbal preparation. It smells amazing. It smells really pokey, actually. Yeah. It's and um, it's a formulation that we put together and love it. It's really, really good. And the idea is that the the herbs within the preparation enter the bloodstream, uh, reach up into the skin and make the dog less attractive to fleas and ticks. I contend that raw fed dogs are less attractive to fleas and ticks, but that doesn't mean that if you feed your dogs raw, you're never going to get fleas and ticks. OK, obviously, the, the other side of this is there are flea and tick magnets. Some dogs will just get a tick as, 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 as soon as they think of a tick. And some dogs are really resistant to fleas and ticks okay that is to say you can send two dogs they can be brother and sister brother and brother into the forest together and they come out 10 minutes later one dog has 12 ticks on them and the other one has none whatsoever and yet they've been running through the same environment okay if you've got a real tick magnet you will have to perhaps use um, topical products as well so be aware of those topical products so um uh there you go that's how ellie feeds there you go that's the skeletons in the closet yeah we feed whatever comes first out of the out of the freezer the other thing i was going to say how do i feed the dogs now i'm usually in a rush so my my, my version of that is curtailed okay so what i'll do is when i'm feeding is i'll go to the freezer go to the fridge because we defrost in the fridge uh, unless we're unless we're uh, we've forgotten to take anything out in which case the, the uh, meat will be on one of those plates actually have you come across these defrosting plates yeah you can get them ours is made by joseph i have no affiliation with them but it seems to work quite well it's basically just a plate which 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 uh which uh what what's the word which will wick the it doesn't wick the coldness away it it dissipates the coldness into the plate it's black plate so it absorbs the 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 uh the temperature and then that is able to be heated more quickly by the environment okay so i didn't think they would make any difference but i think they make defrosting a little bit quicker okay so it's called a defrosting plate we got ours from amazon or somewhere and that's where we defrost. It also keeps it off the off the kitchen counter, and they're wipe they're wipeable, and you know, so really, really great. So, um, I will get the eighty ten ten. I'll put it into the bowl, and basically, what I do because I'm a bit lazy and I'm a bit I, a bit quick, and I know that Ellie does a, a really great job with loads of great veg, veggies on a regular basis. I will just get um, powdered herb supplements um from for example from oh for example i'm going to be talking about these on thursday so i happen to have them with me um these are these are herb uh products from vermix it sounds like a vermix commercial it's not okay it's just i happen to be in, in here and this is genuinely what we actually do so we use uh when i'm Mr. Lazy is feeding the dogs. I will just use that rather than cooking the, the veggie, chopping them and and and, um, and frying them in, in olive oil and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'll just make it a really, really quick and simple thing. And I'll just use you know, a handful of herbs, a handful of some maybe some spices, some turmeric, something like that. Um, a little bit of the old uh, flea and tick. I'll, I'll put that in. And that is how I do the raw food quickly. I'll also put a squirt of uh, a fish oil on there or capsules of fish oils. Um, luckily, I get sent loads of samples of, of uh, supplements and things like that. And so <laughs> we've got a big, big um, a big cupboard full of these things. And so to a certain extent, I'll kind of just take my pick. And that for me, 
emphasizes one of the most important elements of feeding raw. What is the most, okay, so question, here's a question, everybody. What's the most important thing when you're feeding raw food? Is it choosing really great meat? Is it choosing really great, really great NHS, nuts, herbs, and seeds? No, it's not what you put in the bowl. It's the variety that you give. Now, most people, like I say, give this, give a different thing every single day. And, and the ideal for me is you give the same thing for a week, but then you change it and you give it something else, some another protein for, for a week. And then you change it and you give another protein for a week and then you change it. And, and yeah, that for me is the way to do variety. But you also do variety of your nuts and the herbs and the seeds and you do variety of any spices that you put on. If you put a bit of garlic in, you can do that you know, three weeks out of four in the month. Absolutely great. This is really, really good. So that I've, I've been wanting to to discuss that and and the fact that Ellie, there you go. I, I'm guilty of uh, feeding my dogs get uh, very lightly sauteed. I think that's the word. Very lightly sauteed um, green veg uh, every day that Ellie's feeding and they get the meat and um they're looking good i'm really proud they look great uh bluebell's got is, is is a she's got a really shiny coat uh mouse has got a, a, a slightly more uh is really healthy but it's slightly different it's 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 not it's innately not quite as shiny but it's really beautiful and they smell great and what have you okay so there we are um that's it that's enough about me and my dogs. Let's have a look at um, a few of the questions. Um, thanks again to Karen. Um, if I disappear when I go and look at my list, then bear with me. Hopefully you can still hear me. So the first one is from Debbie and she says um, query about CBD. Uh, she has a uh, a dog who's on Cartrofen and loads of supplements for the joints, and um, and she has a two year old who can be reactive, who is re improving with uh, behaviourist and training, and so she's saying, uh, what about CBD for both dogs? And it it's a good uh, good question there, Debbie. Um, what uh, could you see me while I was gone? Anybody? No. OK. Um, so CBD, CBD for arthritic and sore joints. Yes, absolutely great. Yeah, really, really would recommend uh, uh, that. Make sure that the your diet <clears throat> is fundamentally in, in, in absolutely great shape. And simply because I have them here because of Thursday. I've got, there are, this is, this is the Vermex joint support. Okay. Hopefully I won't get out of focus. Hmm. And then back. Okay. Herbs. That's, yeah, that's a nice blend. I helped them make it. I really like it. I'm really proud of it. And we are going to talk to talk about it on Thursday at seven o'clock. OK, uh, if you go to the Facebook Vermex Facebook group, uh, then then you can get that there. But what I'm saying is herbs uh, are really, really important and CBD. Yes, I would use CBD for arthritic, osteoarthritic issues. But I'd also have a look. There's a product called Antonol. I would go and get it, but I'll go out of focus and, and <laughs> you won't be able to see me again um antinol a n t i n o l whether you can get it stateside i'm not sure but in in the uk you can definitely get it antinol it's basically very concentrated fish extract i didn't think it was going to work i came across it four or five years ago and it can be really really useful it's very very small so even if a dog is not very fat tolerant and you want to get some fish oil into them antinol is a really great uh, thing to to think about another thing is uh literally i did not place this here i have it here um they this is called salad which you might 
here where can i put it where you can see it salad jesic can you see that salad jesic which sounds like it's going to be a pharmaceutical but actually it's not it is white willow bark which sounds like something from a witch's brew okay it's white willow bark and you think why are you giving white willow bark because it contains salicylates hence uh, the white willow is salix alba okay so this is just a, an easy to give preparation of white willow bark the salicylate you're going to say to me won't we give our dogs um, um, stomach ulcers by giving them salicylates which is another name for aspirin and the answer is that using those these these types of preparations carefully you don't because there are other elements within the white willow which protect from gastric ulceration so it's really really clever stuff so have a think of that cbd yes go for it really really good um uh and the other one behavioral yes cbd can be very useful for behavioral issues it just it's just a a a karma it allows the dog to focus before engaging in kind of reactive behavior so that's a, a real cracker to look into um Let's have a look at another question here and then I'm going to start. I'm going to talk to you guys and what I will do is the other ones. I'm going to go over to Patreon. I'll do those on uh, a Patreon, but I'd rather talk to you. So last question from the list. Uh, looking how I can help uh, two girls, particularly the younger eight year old cocker who does a lot of small poos often seems a little constipated. She only gets duck or chicken feet uh or necks and boneless with it uh completes as well and various companies in the uk and supplements and she is very moody and reactive too mm. okay let's just go with the uh the constipated small poos anal gland thing to start with so if your dog is producing relatively small poos a little bit like sheep poos and they're absolutely fine and the anal glands are fine and and everything's um great then carry on you're doing fine that's absolutely uh, fine a lot of um uh wolf poos uh, can be quite small and quite kind of uh, bony and pellety and they get on fine like that if your dog isn't isn't uh, good with that and they have a tendency to constipation there are two major ways to address that number one is to introduce some veggies now if you like ellie you can you can spend 15 minutes you can saute them gently so that they're still crisp but they have been softened a little bit or if you like me uh if i was had to get some green veg into the bowl i would get some greens put them into the blender add some water or some bone broth yeah, and make a smoothie and add that to the tune of 10, 20, even even 25 percent uh, in order to get some plant fiber going through. And that can turn sheepy type poos into much more solid poos. That's especially a great thing to do if you've got a dog who's got anal gland issues. The other uh product and 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 connor doesn't normally talk about his products uh they are up here on the shelf up here you can't see them because they're out of focus but the other one is is connor's product called stool right which is a seaweed which has a, 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 a the ability to really firm uh stools and i would look into that it's called stool right r-i-t-e one word s-t-o-o-l-r-i-t-e so the cheap option is you raid the fridge make a smoothie and pour that onto the 80 10 10 uh and the the other option is the uh sprinkling on the stool right from uh from connor dogs first dot ie he's gonna love me for plugging his product which he doesn't normally do god bless him so uh moddy says psyllium husk psyllium husk is also yeah really really useful and uh, <laughs> moddy knows all, all about we uh she and i have uh, gone 10 rounds uh with uh with a dog uh uh but he is having psyllium husk on a regular basis and that has fixed him that's 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 stopped him getting blocked up 
every six months or so in a really pretty bad way. He's now right as rain. So uh, best wishes to Midgey. Um, OK, let's have a little look. What's everybody saying? Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Debbie says uh, simply CBD. Yeah, there are lots of CBD companies out there. Uh, we use Global Greens. Um, uh, Sally Tobin uh, is a big fan of Blessed CBD. Uh, I, I haven't used them yet. Sorry, Sally. Um, uh, and I'm looking. There's another one called Elevance, who I am looking at now as well. I promise, Sally, I will look at the Blessed CBD. Broad spectrum, I think broad spectrum uh, is, is, is important, number one. Uh, number two, that, that they don't use any um, organic solvents. Yeah, like like dry cleaning fluid and things in order to get the, the CBD out of the hemp seed. That's really important. And also you need a certificate of authenticity and a certificate of um that the company has a, a certificate to say that it is the real deal and it, it does contain what it purports to contain. Those are the the elements that you would um, look at in a quality CBD. And if they if they can't produce those, then move on and, and think of uh, other other product. OK. Um, Susie Greaves rightly says Slippery Elm is under great pressure. Uh, did I mention Slippery Elm? I may have done. I think it's great. You need to source it very carefully. It has to be ethically sourced, sustainably sourced Slippery Elm. Other options will be um, Psyllium Husk, which is ubiquitous. You can get it everywhere. And the other one is Marshmallow, which is very easy. Marshmallow, not the things that you toast on the fire, but the, the root of the marshmallow plant which is also very good for um, helping to bulk up stool. OK, so that's really good. Um, let me let me look. Let me look. I'm going to go up a wee bit. Um, uh, Caroline says Antonol. That's how you spell it. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, Antonol. I was surprised how, how useful it is. Um, uh, ah, Philippa, she's getting into the turmeric and the oregano. Oregano, that's American. I'm listening to too many American audio books. Oregano. She's getting into that, which is fabulous. Sorry, Americans. Um, uh, and uh, let's have a look. Where else have we got some? uh this oh this is salagesic white willow bark thank you fiona supporting us uh rpm uh as ever amazing um uh no this is nice hal zen says antonel the one thing that has really helped my dogs i was very skeptical <laughs> i was amazed at the result we just tried about everything else including librella wow better than librella uh wow i i'm not against librella it's just it's a very new product and i'm a little bit suspicious about new products it's a little bit like new software uh, you know when whenever mac does an update i always give it some time whenever they come out with a new phone i always give it some time for them to find glitches and get rid of the glitches before i i, I upgrade to whatever it might be so um Again with Librella, yeah, it's very new. I'm just going to let it bed in and just make sure that that there are no unforeseen issues with it. Um, here we go. Let me go. Let me look. Let me look. I'm just looking through some questions. Thing is, when you're doing this with three of us, while somebody's talking, uh, the other two guys can be looking at notes and looking at our our questions uh there we go looking back looking back looking back you guys have been having a great old chat in the background it's fantastic well done it's really good that's part of the whole deal yeah 
is you know we haven't got all the answers there's um we can all learn from each other biofunction a is another one of connor's ones Modi says yep it's a nice really nice product it's prebiotic it could help with um the uh, stool function stool stool quality uh, uh la, la, la. where are we okay so let's look just looking at the last uh okay i think and uh, there's somebody saying about about um podcasts uh tracy says she loves listening uh uh i think she's talking about podcasts so there we go um not many questions there guys that's good as long as you're all content and happy and lovely this is really excellent so let's go back to our questions let's have a little questions uh we've looked at um we've looked at cbd we've looked at small poos uh here's another one from susan who says raw seniors does their microbiome change in reference to bone absorption and breakdown of foods um that's the first question uh i'll come back to you in case i've disappeared does the microbiome change yes um i'm not sure how much work has been done in in dogs as they age but if you look at stephen gundry he's the longevity guru he, there are there are bugs like acamantia which are prevalent in young humans which are reduced as you get older and there is a correlation between the better your acamantia the 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 you the, the, the kind of the better you age um that's acamantia you'll have to google it a k e r m a n s i a off the top of my head acamantia it's a bug and there is a a really good way of getting boosting your acamantia because we're all thinking oh i want to age really well and it's a type of tea you're gonna have to look at stephen gundry md to find out what the tea is it i think it's uh oolong tea perhaps it's one of the smoky ones so if you don't like tea you're out of luck but if you do like tea uh, then uh, that's it i don't really like smoky tea so it's not not my cup of tea so i'm going to have to look at something else to try and maintain my acamantia that is a long way of saying your biome will change as you age but i think perhaps what changes more is your digestive capability for example i think when you're young all your organs tend to work really well your liver and your heart and your kidneys and everything else including your pancreas okay most people most young people most young dogs will be producing lots of fantastic uh, digestive enzymes but as you get older I think that capacity will will reduce with age yeah your heart capacity reduces your lung capacity reduces so why wouldn't your 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 capacity to produce enzymes why would they not produce why would they not um uh reduce as well and if you're digesting food less effectively i think that's going to impact the biome and so what i do in that situation is if i'm suspecting in the older dog that 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 the pancreas is just a little bit tired i think digestive enzymes are a really really great idea um, if there's any worry about um, certain proteins pig protein in particular because many of the canine digestive enzymes are made from porcine pig pancreas okay pig pancreas pancreatic juice and therefore what i tend to use i used uh, supergest by higher nature supergest by higher nature because it's a vegetarian digestive enzyme and therefore you haven't got any pork getting in the way of food trials or something like that digestive enzymes really really safe to give um 
even if you give them to a normal dog, I don't think you're going to do any harm. Very good for you know, skinny dogs who you're trying to build up. If you if, uh, post surgery or in bitches who you're trying to make um, ensure that they they are absorbing as as much of the nutrients going through their gut as possible. So lots of lots of um, things that one can do in that situation for for that. And the second part, if you can hear that, that is we've got peacock. We've got two peacocks. They came to us. We didn't. Well, we the first one came to us, and then we got the second one to keep the first one company. Okay, just to let you know, we are not so pretentious as to say, to think. Oh, let's go and get some peacocks because they'll look lovely in the garden. During this season, they're an absolute pain because they just nonstop from four in the morning until 10 at night and beyond. They will start. They will be the boys will be um, screaming like that. If you can't hear it, then you'll think I'm just talking to myself. But I promise you there are crazy peacocks screaming out there. So Susan, second part of her question is ongoing support to aid digestion, organs, mobility, ongoing support to aid digestion organs mobility and recommended going forward okay so i think uh, uh, the digestive enzymes is a really good one to think about with the older patient um for organs i think that um milk thistle and dandelion uh, are, are, are wonderful herbs really really safe herbs to give um what uh yeah uh, wonderful herbs to give uh you can get these things online and if you do buy them online they usually have um uh, dose uh, ranges now that we're talking about it uh and literally i did not did not prep this i promise you uh, uh <laughs> literally i didn't look at karen's list until i came on okay so that is called the senior blend up there in the kind of yellowy color okay and this is a mix of herbs which are for circulation for anti-inflammatory effects and for kind of general pep up and go if you'd like more information about these i'm going to do uh, a, 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 a an introduction to them on thursday at seven on the vermex website this is not an advert for vermex but it just happens that i have these here as i said earlier now okay so we're over time i'm gonna go now guys i'm gonna do some more questions on patreon because we like to look after our patreon people thank you very much uh, it's been great and thanks for everybody for the last 48 hours really appreciate your support uh, um, Dr. Budgie and Dr. Lark are back next week. And I don't know what on earth we're doing, but we will let you know. So that's me saying be happy, be healthy. And uh, I will see you on Patreon in just a few minutes. This will be posted later. Uh, Bren is going to post it. It may not even be posted to, in, onto Patreon till tomorrow. Apologies, but. We're um, we're just making things up because the guys are sky.